So even if we don't know whether the square root of 2 is real or not, the rational roots theorem, if we believe the rational roots theorem to be true, and we're not going to prove it in this course, that's for your abstract algebra course to do, but if we believe that that theorem is true, we can use it to determine whether or not a number is rational or irrational. But the first step is for us to figure out what do we even mean when we say the square root of 2? What does the square root of 2 actually mean? If we call it x, then what do we know is true about x if x is the square root of 2? So even not knowing anything else about the nature of the square root of 2, we know that by definition of square root, the square root of 2 is going to be something which satisfies, on the one hand, we could say x squared equals 2. Right? Um, but once we start running around in polynomial land, uh, we usually want to think of roots of polynomials, which are solutions that make a polynomial equal to 0. So we'll move that 2 over to the other side. And we'll instead think about the equation x squared minus 2 equals 0. Okay? And here's the great thing about this polynomial, x squared minus 2, is that it doesn't require the use of any irrational numbers. Anything which is not already rational, and we agree that the rationals exist and we know how to do arithmetic with them, it only requires rational stuff to write that polynomial down. So we don't have to, to run outside of our boundaries uh, in order to do that. So we'll call this polynomial p of x. p of x equals x squared minus 2. OK. And so we've turned this into the question, is square root of 2 rational, to a new question. And the question is, are the roots of p of x rational? So here's where the rational roots theorem can help us. And so the rational roots theorem begins with a polynomial having rational coefficients. So I'm just going to write down a polynomial having rational numbers as its coefficients. We're going to say a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 Oops. plus and so on and so on all the way down to maybe a 1 times x to the first plus a 0. So I'm using the a's to represent the coefficients of the nth power. So the nth power has coefficient a n all the way down to the zeroth power, the constant, uh, has coefficient a0. Um, and all of these, a0 up through a n, are rational numbers. So if these two things are true, that all these are rational numbers, and that f is a function which is defined by this polynomial expression. And if, in addition, I have a root, and I'm going to call that root r, which is a rational number, so I'm going to call it p divided by q, where p and q are integers. And if that rational number satisfies f of r equals 0, In other words, r is a root of this polynomial, which is a rational number. And here's going to be our conclusion. I think we actually probably need one more hypothesis, so leave a little bit of space right here. Uh, let me add something in a second. But here's the great part about this, is that if there exists a rational root of this polynomial, and we write it as p divided by q, then it's going to be true that p is one of the factors of a0, and q is one of the factors of a sub n. And you might say, well, how do we talk about factors when these numbers are rational? Um, so in that case, what we would do is actually multiply this all through by whatever the least common divisor of all of the denominators of these rational numbers are, so that we can assume without loss of generality that not only are these numbers rational, but we're going to make these numbers integers. So I'm going to actually tweak that. But you should convince yourself why we don't lose any generality in that statement. So if all of these are integers, um, and then we're going to make additionally one more uh, stipulation. We're going to stipulate that a0 is not equal to 0, uh, and that a0 is not equal to 0. Sorry, a n. Just so that we can say for sure that these coefficients, a n and a0, actually do have meaningful factors. So, 
to finish writing the statement. Again, it's, it's, it's an easy thing to put into practice. It's easier to put into practice than it is to actually state concretely. Then P divides into A not evenly, and Q divides into AN evenly. Okay. This vertical bar notation for divides uh, is something you see a lot in a number theory class, for example. Right. Um, so this is the rational roots theorem. And it looks really weird written down in notation. But have you ever used this theorem in a previous class uh, at some point? Sometimes pre-calculus classes expose you to this, interestingly. But then you kind of forget about it for a while. Note that our example on the left is asking, does this function here, p of x equals x squared minus 2, does this have any roots that are rational numbers? And we want to use this theorem to help decide that question. And what this theorem says is that if a polynomial does have a rational root, then these things must be true about the numerator and the denominator of that rational root. That it must be a factor of this divided by a factor of that. So let's look at our example. And if we believe this theorem, let's apply this theorem to this polynomial. So if yes, then what's great about the rational roots theorem is it gives us that the only options for the rational roots of this polynomial, x squared minus 2, are going to be factors of the constant term. And here the constant term is 2 divided by factors of the highest order term, the leading coefficient. Sorry. And the leading coefficient in this polynomial is 1. So the only options for the rational roots, for the rational roots, are something which is a factor of 2 divided by something which is a factor of 1. Right? The constant coefficient divided by the leading coefficient. And because these coefficients can be positive or negative, those factors can also include positives or negatives. So I'm going to put a little positive or negative sign out on the front here. So how many choices does that actually give us in the case of this polynomial over here on the left? Yeah, it really gives us four options. What are those four options? One, negative, minus two, and negative. Yeah. Plus, minus two, and plus, minus one. So these are the only possible rational roots of this polynomial according to the rational roots theorem. And there's only four of them. Out of the whole infinite universe of possible rational numbers, these are the only four that even stand a chance of satisfying x squared minus two equals zero if we believe this theorem. Meanwhile, square root of 2 is something which satisfies this equation. So all we have to do is decide, is one of these four things actually the square root of 2 in disguise? And to figure that out, we just can test whether these four things do or do not satisfy this equation. And since there's only four of them, we can check that directly with brute force. Let's plug each one of these potential rational roots into our polynomial. For p of x equals x squared minus 2, what is p of 2? 2 squared minus 2? That's 2. What's p of negative 2? Also 2. Uh, p of 1? Negative 1. And p of negative 1? Also negative 1. All right, so there's the value of this polynomial for all four of these possible values. What do we conclude out of this exercise? But what's not rational? P of x is rash. It's a, it's a polynomial with rational coefficients. But what are we trying to prove is not rational? The right, the square root of 2. And the square root of 2 is one of the roots. But we just showed that any root of this polynomial which is rational must be one of these four things. But none of these four things are actually roots. Therefore, anything which is a root of this polynomial cannot be rational. So you follow that logic? Because the logic is what's, to me, more important here in this example than our particular application of this theorem. So what we've just shown is that we've shown that all, or actually, let me put it this way, um, none of the possibilities
for rational roots given by this theorem are actually roots. Are in fact roots. Thus, the square root of 2, which is by definition a root of this polynomial, must be irrational.